I'm Lucy Lapwing and I'm here today on this fantastic squelchy moist stretch of bog here in Northern Ireland and that might be the sort of place you have another name for something like a swamp or a, a mire or even a quagmire it's basically somewhere that's squishy and I don't know if you can hear it if I move my boot it's a very squishy wet place these are amazing habitats it's a type of habitat that's fed mostly by rain uh, coming from above there's no groundwater coming up and it's dominated by all of these moss species you can see around me here Now, these are known as bog mosses or sphagnum mosses, and they're an amazing assemblage of species that control their environment. They are ecosystem engineers. So you get about a metre of peat per 1,000 years. It takes a really, really long time. And it's all because of these amazing little plants. Now, today I'm being taken out by the RSPB's Northern Ireland Peatland Programme team, who are hopefully going to find us some bogalicious stuff to look at. Hi, Martin. Thank you so much for bringing me to your bog. Hello, welcome to Northern Ireland in Ban Valley. So you have got quite a lot of peat bog habitat here in Northern Ireland, haven't you? Yes, we do. 12% of Northern Ireland's land surface is, is bog. There's a very long history of connection between the people and, and peat. Mm -hmm. and, and one of them it was demonstrated through the use of peat as a fuel to, to keep homes. So it's people, you know, living close to the peat, but it's also really good for wildlife as well, isn't it, and other species? It is, and, and that's something we, we need to, to champion. We need to sort of demonstrate the value, really, mm. um, rather than looking at a peat bog and thinking it as, as a source of fuel, all the other things that are going on here, the value of, of the nature that lives here. Yeah, the peatland project here in Northern Ireland, what is it you're, you're hoping to do to help remedy some of this? Our staff are developing ways of restoring some of the banks such as these, and sort of encouraging the, the, the beautiful um, vegetation that lives down here up, up onto the bog more broadly. But also, we're, we're chatting with an awful lot of people and, and opening people's eyes as to how much value and on mm. how many different levels uh, black bogs and, and raised bogs are important. Well, should we go and see what we can find today then, see if you can find anything cool? Real tired. All right, Martin, one thing I love about bogs is sphagnum mosses, and we've got a really cool one here, haven't we? We do, yes. Get wet, get on these down in the bog. What's this one? This is sphagnum cuspidatum. Cuspidatum. And under the water, it kind of looks like fluffy, doesn't it? Yeah, it really sort of expands under the water. Really fluffy, lends it its nickname. What's that? Drowned kittens. Drowned kittens, that's a bit sad. It is. <laughs> well, yeah, and I see can, what you, you mean. You can it see does... the, 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 young, the furry nature of it. And it is quite cute, like, like a kitten as well. Yeah. I mean, if I get a little bit out here, you don't have roots, do they? So you can just remove them. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. How satisfying is that? that? Yeah. It's like a splat. You can see that furry quality. Yeah. Wow, I love that. Drowned kitten moss. Sphagnum cusp cuspidatum? Cuspidatum. Cus yeah. Cuspidatum. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, should we see what other ones we can find? Yeah. Okay, Martin, we've got yet another type of sphagnum here, haven't we? This one's different yet again. Yeah, you can see it. It looks a bigger, chunkier sphagnum than the others. This is sphagnum papillosum. Papillosum, that's good to say. I like that word. Um, it, it's part of a, a little family of sphagnum, which are known as the big peat builders, the ones that were building blocks of, of the bog. Um, and, and this is sort of yeah, slightly spiky, but, but this sort of structure yeah. you're looking at. I like it. And it's, it's a really nice, bright kind of lime green as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a real variation in colour at times and, and size, um, but a uh, lovely species. Yeah. Um, and you can see the niches it's creating as well. You can see some of the sedges coming through here. This is common cotton grass. Oh. oh, so in summer, this is the one with the thing that looks like a little fluffy bunny rabbit's tail. Yeah. The flower. So again, again there are species which will change the look of the bog completely. Oh, fantastic, yeah, bobbing in the breeze on a summer's day down the bog. Yeah, it's rolling nice. Lovely. Okay, Martin, what is this about? So we're measuring the depth of the peat. Mm. Shall we see how deep it is? Yeah, go on. Yo. Oh, wow. Here we go. <laughs> These sticks really need to long. Oh my goodness, so it's already taller than me. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Wow. So One, how... two, three, four. Uh, four meters, 20 centimeters. Wow. So that's so. How how long did that take to form then? Well, if you average a millimetre a year of growth, mm -hmm. 
4,200 years. Fast maths. Wow, yeah. okay, that's amazing. So we're, we're stuck right now in the bounty. Four, yeah. Over 4,000 years old, under our feet. Isn't that incredible? It takes you through time like nothing else. Yeah. Walk. Now, bogs are really special places for wildlife, and that is because they have those unique conditions. They're very acidic, they're very low nutrient, they're very, very wet, and they're often in quite cold places. So there's not an awful lot of species that can survive under such harsh conditions. The ones that do, however, are amazing. They often have incredible specialist adaptations that allow them to thrive in boggy habitats. So when it comes to the fact that bogs are facing a lot of threats and a lot of damage, um, it's really important that we're doing the work to restore them, to allow those special species to recover and to thrive. And with that special peatland soil underneath, that is one of the biggest carbon sinks that we've got. So when you've got a bog that is degraded or damaged or drying out, we're losing carbon into the atmosphere and that carbon sink is being eroded. So by re-wetting bogs, by restoring bogs and allowing that bog moss, those sphagnums to grow and replenish, you're not only helping the wildlife, but you are helping protect and really value one of our most precious carbon sinks.